Good evening, Groovy Citizens, and happy Motivational Monday. Not only is it Motivational Monday, you guys, but it's also Labor Day. So happy Labor Day to each and every one of you. Now, I hope you all have had a wonderful day. I hope you all have had a phenomenal weekend. I know that I have, okay? So I've spent my day, the majority of today, to be honest with you, editing on the latest book that I'm working on with Ross, my writer in crime, my writing partner in crime, I should say. And I've been watching, I don't know if y'all remember that show, The Dinosaur Train. Oh my God, I've always loved that. The cutest little show. I've, I found it on YouTube. So I've been watching that today. I actually got started watching that when my daughter was younger and I just always have loved it. And I've also been just working on my business because I told y'all I'm not going to end up in the fourth quarter confused days discombobulated baffled and befuddled because i didn't do what i needed to do to make sure i end this year on a high note because i'm already thinking about the first of the year and guess what i was telling my good friend mark i had a dream i had a dream that i was doing a mastermind class in january and so I've already written that down in my vision book because I need to start working on that. I, as you all know, I'm preparing a mastermind class for the fall, but I'm also doing one in January where we're gonna be talking about getting set for the year. But here's the kicker. Here is the kicker. The class is only going to be, now listen, listen carefully, because when I get ready to put the information out, don't say, well, Michelle, I didn't know. The class is only going to be for 10 people the 10 people that come to that class the class is going to be free first of all okay it's going to be free and you are going to receive a journal with which to write down the things that you want to accomplish I, we're just going to be working probably well we're going to look at the year overall but then we're going to really focus on the first two quarters of the year during that mastermind like i said i'm still putting that together but like i said it's only going to be open to 10 people because it is free and i will be provide providing you with journals and you will get a copy of my 21 day gratitude journal also for free okay so see how I do nice things, okay? But anyway, so we'll have more information on that to come in the next couple of months. Getting back to what I was getting ready to tell you all as well. Y'all, it's 99 degrees. It is 99 degrees and we're gonna have upper 90s for the next couple of days. I believe on Friday, it's gonna go back to the 80s and then all next week we'll be back into the 80s. But for the rest of this week, it's gonna be hot, okay? So I have been just trying to stay cool and don't do anything that's going to require me to have to come outside if I don't have to. Because y'all should have seen me when I first got in the car. I had sweat dripping off my face just from walking from the front door to getting into my truck. Okay? It's hot outside. Now, let's get into today's topic. Today's topic is overcoming regret. Oh, and also, before I forget, right before I did this video, I recorded a one-minute reel, motivational reel on Instagram as well as TikTok. Make sure if you follow me on those platforms that you check that out because I think that is something that we all need. Now, getting back to overcoming regret. We all regret, we all, we all have regrets about something. That's a normal part of life. However, when we hold on to those regrets for months, for weeks and years, they begin to impact your physical and mental health. Let me put a pin right there. Do you know that some people are walking around holding on to regrets that they've had for the last 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, even 50 years. And all that does, it just wears you down. It beats you down physically. And then you wonder why you walk around here and you're sick all the time. Because you're walking around with this regret and you're allowing it to control you. After we get done with this video today, I don't care, and y'all know I don't like to say I don't care, but I don't. I don't care what that regret is, but I want you to let it go because we are not, we are not carrying it any further than today. Today is the day that you let it go. Again, I don't care how big or small it is, you need to let it go. It is in the past, and y'all know I love me some Madea, and like she says, your past, like your big ass, is behind you. So why you keep why do you keep walking around with it and, and, and keeping and allowing it to keep you from living the best life possible? Mm. 
So here's some ways that you can overcome regret. I have uh, eight tips that I'm gonna share with you, a takeaway, and then I'm gonna let you be. So number one, own your feelings. By owning your feelings, you gain more power over them. By actually naming them, you realize <clears throat> they are just feelings and you are able to take back your power. So take a minute or two or three or more to reflect on how you're feeling. Are you sad? Are you ashamed? Are you feeling guilty, overwhelmed, tensed, etc., etc., etc.? Take out your journal, write down how you feel, and then leave your feelings on the paper. Remember, you control your feelings, they don't control you. I can't stress this enough. And I know y'all say, Michelle, why are you always pushing for us to write in journals? I just don't do that. That's not me. Well, it may not be, but sometime, at some point in time in life, you're going to have to pull out your journal because I'm telling you, when you write things down, you get it out of here and you get it on paper. So if you have regrets about anything, no matter what it is, I want you to get out that journal and I want you to write it down. Write down how you're feeling. If you're mad as hell, you write that down. If you're sad, if you're upset, if you're confused, if you're baffled, befuddled, whatever word you wanna use, write it down. And then after you write down how you're feeling, you leave your feelings on that paper. Don't you take it with you anywhere else. You leave it on that piece of paper, close that journal up, put it away. We're done with that. We're not gonna revisit that anymore because for far too long, you all have allowed your regrets to control you. You are in control, not the regret. So stop letting it, letting it control you. Some of you all haven't been happy for a long time. Why? Because you have these regrets about something that you should have done or something that you did do. And, and you are allowing that regret to keep you from being happy. The devil is a lie. I don't regret anything. I don't regret anything because guess what? Whatever it is I did, I did it for a reason. Whatever it is I didn't do, I didn't do it for a reason. And the, the, the biggest part is it's in the past. It's nothing I can do about it. Nothing at all. I've asked God to forgive me. I'm moving on. I refuse to let it control me. Mm. Number two, practice self-love. So truth is we all make mistakes. And when we regret the things that we've done, that's when we begin to feel like a failure. So make sure you confront yourself, I'm sorry, comfort yourself like you would your best friend. Tell yourself you are a good person. You just made a mistake. Make sure you are speaking positive affirmations to yourself when you start to feel down. You know, it's funny how we can have a friend, a coworker, a neighbor, a family member, whoever else, they're going through something and you have all these wonderful things to say. You say, oh, you know what? You are a great person. You know, you, you, you can get through this. God forgives you, you know, uh, whatever else it is that you say to people, but you can't say the same things to yourself. You messed up just like they messed up. So why can you speak life into them and you speak damnation upon yourself? Come on now. Let's stop doing that. I want you to start speaking to yourself the way you would a friend. Y'all forgive me if my bra strap is showing. Start, start speaking to yourself because you deserve it. Yes, you messed up. Yes, you made a mistake. But again, there's nothing you can do to fix it. So you forgive yourself and you say, guess what? In spite of whatever that is, whatever that thing it is you did, fill in the blank, you are still a good person. In spite of whatever you did, God still loves you. In spite of whatever you did, God's grace and mercy are still being extended to you because they are. Whether you think about it or not, they, they are, no matter what you did. God's grace and mercy is still falling down on you and it's falling down on me. But getting back to what I was talking about, practice self-love. Because if you can't love yourself, how in the world can you expect somebody else to love you? How is it that you have so much, so much self-love for other people, but you can't show the same self-love to yourself? Y'all need to work that out. Mm. Number four, accept what you can't control. We can't change the past, but we can learn from it and live a better rest of our lives. So again, I said, accept what you can't control. I can't control 
how other people think or how other people behave. You can't control how your ch children act. You brought them up right, but you can't control how they choose to live their lives. So why are you stressing yourself over it? Why? Let me tell you what you do. You pray about it. Put it in the master's hands, as they say, and then you let God deal with that thing because there's nothing you can do about it. Absolutely nothing at all. So why are you stressing yourself over something that you have no control over? You cannot control when people decide they don't want to be in your life anymore. So why stress yourself about it? If they don't want to be in your life, honey, let them go. See, it's been real. Cherish the memories that you share with them and move on with your life. Stop stressing over things that you have no control over. You, you, you have no control over the fact that life happens. You, you have no control. I have no control. We have no control over the hurricanes that happen, the storms that happen, the, the fighting that's going on around the world. We have no control over that. So why stress yourself out about it? Pray about it. Prayer is what changes things, not you stressing and, stressing and worrying about it. Pray about it. Give it to God and let him do what only he can do. Mm. Number five, ask for forgiveness. You will find so much relief if you just start to forgive yourself. First of all, when I say ask for forgiveness, I'm talking about ask for forgiveness from the person that you may have hurt or that you have wronged or whatever it was that you did ask for forgiveness for them. Now, they have a choice. They can forgive you or not. That is their choice. That's up to them. But if they choose not to accept your forgiveness, don't let that bother you. Mm -mm, don't let it bother you. You've done your part. Now, you forgive yourself and you move on. Do you understand what I'm saying? If I say to you, you know what? I messed up and I'm asking that you forgive me. And you say, well, Michelle, I can't. All I can say is, okay, fair enough. Fair enough. I've asked for your forgiveness. You said you can't. I've done my part. I'm done with it because I forgive me. I'm not going to walk around here with my bottom lip dragging the ground, stressing and crying because I made a mistake. Mm -mm, the devil is a whole lie and the truth ain't in him. I'm not doing it. So once you ask other people to forgive you, forgive yourself. Because here's another thing that I've seen with people. And these are people that I've talked to who they've been forgiven by others, but they have a hard time forgiving themselves. Oh, but Michelle, you don't understand. You're right. I don't understand. Because if you've asked God, to, if you've asked the person that you did whatever you did to, to forgive you, you've asked God to forgive you. And you know, when we ask God to forgive us, he forgives us instantly. God doesn't say, mm, well, let me, let me think about it. I'll get back to you next week. We'll talk over coffee. No, he doesn't do that. He forgives us right away. And so if, if God can forgive you and that other person can forgive you, why can't you forgive yourself? Again, many of you walking around here, you're sick as a dog. Why? Because you refuse to forgive yourself. Honey, let me tell you something. You're not hurting anybody else but yourself. If you walk around here and you don't want to forgive yourself. So I'm always going to forgive me. Do I mess up? Absolutely. Do I always get it right? No, I do not. But I ask for forgiveness from God first. And then I forgive me and I'm going to move on. Because I'm not going to let it wear me down. Mm. Number six. Talk to someone you trust. Join a support group or talk to a life coach. Hello, somebody. You have one right here in me. But I, but in all seriousness, though, I do want you all to talk to somebody because sometimes it's hard for you to, to try and heal by yourself. And so I want you to always know that you should always have somebody that you can talk to. You know, I, I know outside of my family, I have two besties that I can talk to. And if I couldn't do that, like I said, I would join a support group or I would find me a coach or a counselor, somebody that I can talk to. This is why I'm always telling you guys that if you don't have anybody else that you can talk to, reach out to me. Let's talk. My goal is to help you figure out what it is that you need to do so you can live your best life possible. I truly believe that is the calling that God has given to me. And I can't help you if you won't let me know that you need help. And you don't have to feel embarrassed because there's nothing to be embarrassed about. Whatever we talk about stays between us. 
The only way other people will know about it is if you tell them. That's it, that's all, because I certainly won't. I cherish your privacy. I respect your privacy. I'm sorry, not cherishing, but I respect your privacy. And so, like I said, unless you want to tell it, it won't be told. But you should always have somebody that you can talk to. That way, you don't walk around allowing it to just... Just, 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 you know, take you on this emotional roller coaster because that's exactly what's happening because you don't feel like you have anybody you can talk to. Number seven, journal regularly. Write down your feelings. Writing down your feelings allows you to sort through your feelings. The more you write, the faster your feelings will pass. Make sure you aren't judging yourself because of what you end up putting on paper. And this is why, again, I'm always talking to you about getting a journal. I do have a journal. I have several different types of journals for, for several different types of things. But I just feel like when I can write down in my journal how I'm feeling about things, it allows me to get it out of my heart it out, allows me to get it out of my head and I put it on paper. And guess what? When I close that book up, whatever it is I wrote down, it's on them. It's, I left it all on the paper. As, uh, oh God, what's the movie? Act like a lady, think like a man. Like the guy said, I left it all on the track. Well, I'm not leaving it on the track because I don't make music, but I left it all in my journal. Because guess what? The next time I open my journal up, I'm going to a, a, a new sheet, sheet of paper, clean sheet of paper where I can start all over again writing down stuff. You all have got to get a journal. I cannot stress enough how awesome and amazing it is when you can just write down how you're feeling. Especially, especially if you have a hard time telling people how you feel, the journal's the next best thing. Because I do know people like that. They have a hard time telling people how they really feel about things or how that person made them feel. But they, it, they feel better writing it down in their journal because it frees them to be able to move on. Now, me personally, I like to write in my journal, honey, but I have no problems with getting with you if I need to. Y'all know that saying, mess around and find out? Well, that's not quite the same, but y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm the one. Don't try me because don't, don't come for me, as my buddy Charles likes to say, unless I send for you. Because you will get it. I promise you that but I like to write my journal too. Let's move on. Number eight, give yourself time. Forgiveness won't happen overnight and that's fine. Your regrets may not go away and they may not go away the next day, the next week, the next month, or the next year, but in time it will pass. So take a deep breath and remember you are on your way to living a regret-free life. So after you do all the steps that I gave you, and I'm pretty sure there are others that you could probably come up with, just know that you may not necessarily get rid of that regret overnight, but over time it will pass and you can begin to live your best life possible. Because I promise you, once you take the time to do the things that I'm asking you to do, you're going to say, wow, I wish I had done this sooner. Because now I can live my best life and I'm not thinking about the things of the past, the, th the things that I should have done, the things that I did do and shouldn't have done. I left it all in my journal. And now I can begin to live my best life possible. But now understand this, because I didn't say this as I was going along, but understand this. Yes, I'm asking you to take these necessary steps, but I do not. In any way, shape, or form, am I telling you don't pray? Okay? Sorry, my nose is itching. I'm not telling you not to pray because I want you to pray even as you take on these steps because you need prayer. Prayer is powerful. You need prayer. And I'm going to tell you what my pastor said recently. He said, sometimes you've got to get down on your knees and pray. Y'all know we, we like to stand and pray. Sometimes I am driving and I'm praying. My eyes aren't closed now. Let's be, be clear about that. But I am praying as I'm driving and I'm talking to God. And one would think that I was talking on the phone through 
the car, but I'm not. I am verbally talking to God out loud, okay? And sometimes I stand where I am. You know, when you're in church and, and the pastor says, every head every head bowed, every eye closed. And sometimes you're standing, sometimes you're sitting and he's praying. You're sitting there like this and you're praying. Well, that's all fine and good, but sometimes you got to get down on your knees and pray and truly talk to God. You've got to come before him as humbly as you know how and pray. So I just wanted to make sure we're clear about that. All these other things are great, but you still have to pray, okay? Now here's your takeaway. Let yourself feel regret without avoiding or wallowing in it. It's all right to feel some regret from time to time, all I'm asking you do, to do is not to wallow in it. It's like uh, having self-pity. Y'all know how we tend to wallow in self-pity and it just drags on forever and ever. It's not a good look, first of all, plus it's stressful. So again, same thing with the regret. It's all right to have it, but I need you to not wallow in it. Don't let it linger. Because some of y'all walking around here regretting, like I said, stuff that you did a year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 50 years ago, and you're still regretting it. It's time to let it go. It is time to let it go. God has so much good out here for you. But until you let it go, let go of that regret, you're not going to be able to get it. You're just not. So having said all of that, you guys, hopefully something I said resonates with you and it helps you to get rid of the regret that you've been walking around with for the longest time. Let it go. I promise you, you'll thank me later. If this is your first time watching my video, one of my videos, I want to say welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. If this is not your first rodeo, I want to say welcome back. Y'all know I miss you and I don't get a chance to see you. Go out there. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the rest of this holiday. Make sure you get you some rest because y'all know tomorrow is a work day unless you're on vacation this week. Tomorrow is a work day for the rest of us. So make sure you get your rest so that you can be ready to take on the rest of this week. Y'all, this is going to be a great week. This is going to be a great week. Somebody is going to get some good news this week. And you've been waiting on that news for a while. I don't know who it is. But somebody's going to get some good news. I'm praying that it's me. But I also am praying that it's you as well. So having said all of that, y'all know the drill. You know the spiel. I love you to the moon and back. And there is nothing. And I mean absolutely nothing that you can do about it. Because I'm always going to love you. I love you all. I want nothing but the best for you. Again, I'm always here. Reach out to me. My information is in the description box. Click on the link tree link. And you will be able to find me somewhere but reach out let's talk let me help you figure out what it is you need to do to get back on track because i know that just like the best is yet to come for me the best is yet to come for you love you all and we'll talk again on wednesday